This is Jim Bergman, and I want to welcome you to today's session. Our guest presenter today is Ramon uh, Granados with Hemp Engineering. I'm going to let uh, Ramon give him his own self-introduction, but we're really looking forward to today's session. He's going to take us through uh, what he and Hemp Engineering are seeing as they uh, the trends and the patterns that are emerging within the hemp industry. I will throw in questions as they come up, but uh, for the majority of today, we're going to let uh, Ramon do most of the speaking. So with that all said, Ramon, if you wanted to do any self-introduction, and we'll get into the slides, and of course, just tell me when you want the next slide to come, okay? Thank you very much, Jim. This is a great pleasure for me to be here in your audience and in your show. I am a civil engineer and I'm an environmental engineer. Um, I do have a career uh, in planning and project controls engineering uh, or cost engineering, which is basically my main focus in, in the last 30 years. So I have taken this uh, experience and I'm trying to do my best of my skills to bring this knowledge and working experience to the hemp industry. So um, hemp engineering is part of, a, um, of the superior business network here in Perth, Australia. Our mission is to promote the whole plant industrial hemp. Um, this is uh, some of our sponsors. Um, I, we are very blessed to have um, a very high top companies around the world. Uh, we work together in many ways, uh, but mainly as a, a mass collaboration, we call it mass collaboration. So in, in that regards, um, my role in this um, conglomerate of companies is to supply engineering, procurement, um, construction management skills to their business. Um, hemp has the um, uh, I guess for the audience, I uh, shouldn't be preaching uh, uh, the preachers. Now, nonetheless, um, industrial hemp um, compared with the marijuana size is uh, the vast ocean compared with um, uh, medical marijuana or the CBD business itself. Uh, from hemp, we can basically eat everything, build everything. We can see everything that we see, touch and drink. We can make it. We can make it out of industrial hemp. Hemp has been a part of the human history since the beginning of times. There has been a, a specifically in testimonies, cannabis, in since ever. It is written in many aspects since in, in the walls, in the paramai. Without hemp um, or cannabis, uh, the Spaniards or English would have never arrived to America. It was basically used for ropes, for sale, for soup. For the for food, the Declaration of the United States was signed on hemp paper. The first book ever printed on in hemp paper that was the Bible in in the 15th century. Currently, there are over 49 countries where uh, hemp has been officially legalized. Recently, I uh, just heard this morning that um, uh, also Mexico has officially declared uh, cannabis uh, not only a human right but also has been clear all the path so that all the people and companies can start growing massively. This is something that is happening in parallel in Thailand and many other countries on, on earth. The global market is uh, basically controlled by three companies, by three countries. China is the largest um, hemp producer, producer of hemp with over 100,000 hectares per year followed by uh, the European Union and Canada. Nonetheless, the United States is picking up very fast after the 2016 Farm Bill that, um, that has um, also opened the door for farmers to start um, growing um, the plant. Um, it is expected that in, in very short time, I, I personally assume that in the next five years, United States will be taking the lead on this regard. In Australia, when when you take the the national the national product, um, you identify the main sectors where cannabis can have an impact. Um, you can easily see that the, this industry can potentially overcome. Uh, or not that the right word is not overcome. The right word is actually, actually is overtake half a trillion dollars in the economy 
that's exactly where if this if we play the cards correctly cannabis can have this impact and um, we can basically produce all kind of products for anywhere on earth so welcome to hemp engineering uh, we are basic social media in linkedin facebook and youtube um, instagram so for any of you that is interested in, in following us our progress you are more than welcome our intention is to create an integrated vertical company um, that is linking from the selections of the genetics to maximize the performance of the of the crops um, by using all the skills that are related to grow this business global matter um, with the intention to reach um, uh, the global market uh, having said that, um, for us to get this done, we we have a very clear understanding of the supply chain management that is required to make this happen. I know it's not easy. Many companies choose to be either farmers or oil producers or else. Our intention is to provide the engineering skills to to any company that is interested to scale up. These, these skills are coming from a large um, uh, experience managing, managing um, uh, teams that, uh, in, that we used to work in the oil and gas industry where, uh, where my experience is coming from. My business partner is Hans Kowalski. He's also uh, graduated from the, U from the US and uh, MIT graduated. And we have been in this journey since the four years ago. Um, Mr. Mauricio Reyes is also an engineer that has been working with us uh, very closely. His main role is to, to, um, to use his estimating skills and he helps us to prepare the proposals when, it, when the time comes. Mr. David Chill, he is our business development. Without his help, it would have been almost impossible to penetrate the Australian market. So uh, the hemp business cycle is um, quite simple. Like I uh, explained earlier, everything starts with the selection of the seed. The selection of the seed depends on the product that we are intending to, uh, to, to do. Uh, once the seed is selected, we grow and we process the crop. Um, by using decorticators and other equipments. It depends on what we're after, if we are fiber, food, or flowers. Once again, like I said, our main task is to plant, implement. Um... Uh, Ramon, before we go on to the next slide, quick question for you. Uh, throughout the session today, if you could point out instances where you see uh, industrial hemp as being unique from other fibers, uh, as well as where there's consistency with some of the other plant species, such as bamboo or organic cotton or uh, jute, uh, some of the other types of uh, plants. Uh, I think it would be very helpful for folks to understand if what you're discussing is unique to industrial hemp or if it's uh, pretty much broad across that entire portfolio of products, okay? Yes. Well, um, that is a very interesting question because we have other companies. Um, one of them is called Biomass Engineering, which I will introduce that company in, uh, uh, further in the presentation. Uh, but we also have another um, uh, business partner, uh, which I will also introduce. His, his name is, uh, his company is Abri. It's a non-organization, non-profit organization that is mainly, its mainly purpose is to uh, promote all kind of biomass. Now, nonetheless, when you compare uh, hemp with any other plant, hemp over over exceed um, the characteristics that are required to to industrialize um, any product um, that we are intending to do. Uh, thank you for your question, and it's good um, to clarify this to the audience. Um, like I said earlier, um, our main intention is to deliver projects to our clients. Uh, industrial projects um, that are over, you know, they were, we're not talking um, small projects, we are talking global projects that, that can range from building homes or any other things. Um, it is our understanding that it does, regardless of um, you choose to go to medical marijuana or to hemp, 
in large scale projects, you still need to to do your feasibility studies, your branding. You need to have a good team uh, in farming. You've got to have definitely um, a project management team and a good operations uh, team. That is also linked to the marketing, sales, um, the legal support, the engineering support, and the administration support. Any project that we will proceed, it will have these um, this, um, characteristics. Um, it is not something that I'm making this up. It is, we are just simply following the Project Management Institute um, uh, scheme, um, which is um, uh, assured that any project can actually become successful. So, welcome to Biomass Engineering. Biomass Engineering is a mix of Mm, it's a merge of three companies. Uh, like I said earlier, Abri, which is our research and development company, um, its main task is to promote products um, and then uh, hemp engineering uh, helps to scale up uh, those projects. And then we have Hemp Australia that uh, is our distribution channels, not just, not just only for Australia, but for the Chinese market. The Chinese market is one of the largest on earth. Um, um, uh, we are very proud and very happy that this alliance is not just working, but is fine tuning every day. Our main focus right now is uh, we're, um, we're about to launch um, hemp battery. Uh, this hemp battery, we expect that can compete with the big ones. Mr. Carl Martel is the CEO of Abri. Um, Mr. Jeffrey Tan is the CEO for Hemp Australia. Uh, like I said earlier, each one has a specific roles within the alliance. Um, and nonetheless, Carl Martel is definitely the brain behind this. He has been working as a scientist, cannabis scientist, in the last 10 years. Um, his products are something that hemp engineering is, is a little by little um, is scaling up um, uh, in an industrial matter. Right now, Carl is in Paraguay. He was hired by the Paraguayan government uh, to kick off the industry over there. And um, they declare industrial hemp a national priority. So uh, we're very proud of this um, of this uh, contract. So and the intention of the of biomass engineering is to to establish a circular economy uh, thinking, where the plan will be any product that we produce that we manufacture, uh, it will have the um, um, the understanding that, or the philosophy from soil to soil. It means that all products can be either finally disposable in a friendly manner to earth and or reuse or recycled. That is the main plan and that's what we're intending to do with the battery, which is our main product. So like I said earlier, um, this is our first prototype. Um, it has shown that uh, Compared with lithium battery, we have over 200% of performance. Now we, in the next couple of weeks, we are packing uh, the next uh, the next product. Um, we will be showing this hemp battery in the Royal Home Show in in Perth, and in 26, 27, and 28th of March. So we are under a lot, of, a lot of pressure to deliver this uh, successfully. <laughs> Over 25,000 people will be shown in this in, in this conference. We have done some past engineering designs in, in Denver, Colorado. And, and both are indoor facilities uh, for, for the medical marijuana. Or, or hemp, in this case, uh, without, uh, with low THC, but high content of CBD for medical purposes. Well, um, one of these uh, 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 parallel ideas was to design and automatize the, the, the farm. Uh, we also designed um, um, 
a state of the art um, a robot that basically is able to monitor the growth um, of the plant. Um, and once the flowers are ready, the robot is able to cut the flowers, dispose, um, place it in a tray, and then it goes to a, a trimming. And then uh, the after the trimming, we can automatically uh, pack the flowers. This is a prototype that um, has not been fully uh, deployed. But the but the engineering is is proven. We we know that we can do it if we get the proper client. So um, uh, this part is more related to hempcrete itself um, or building with hempcrete. As you can see here, this is a typical example of how hempcrete was used since 8,000 years ago. This was recently discovered in the area of Mesopotamia, which is uh, Iraq, Iran, and that's give and take Syria those countries are there and nonetheless after when the prohibition was implemented by the United States in, in the 1940s uh, France didn't follow up and they kept using the technology so nowadays France is basically the leader in, in hempcrete on earth um, uh, it is also important to to, I always say this because after the prohibition, um, hippies were also the ones that kept the technology alive, especially in the United States and Canada. They never stopped using the biomass from hemp or the marijuana in this case because um, hemp was completely forbidden. Uh, and they kept, you know, mixing hemp grid and they never stopped. So, Without the French or without the hippies, we, this knowledge would have been completely lost. And that is a fact. Next, please. So Ramon, before we move on to the next slide, a quick question for you. In terms of, you had earlier shown a global map of the countries where hemp is legal. Uh, obviously, we didn't say where it's not. But the question that came in here is, uh, hemp as a plant, it's legal or not legal in certain countries. Does that change when it gets turned into hempcrete? Uh, is the illegal uh, jurisdiction going to change to it's now legal because the plant has been turned into hempcrete? Or is it really going to be uh, the same uh, legality regardless if it's hempcrete or the native plant? Well, that is a very interesting question, Jim, because um, the truth, the truth of the matter is that uh, because because hemp was rediscovered through the CBD applications for health, especially for people with cancer and um, seizures, um, epilepsy, and else. Um, it has been recently um, rediscovered that we can also build homes and many other things. Now, nonetheless, the law is still is a little bit blurred in many aspects. Um, I yesterday I was talking to to another team in another in another uh, interview that it is my thinking that uh, it is more a political issue than a science. If you are intending to grow for building, it doesn't matter if the plant has 20% of THC, if the purpose is going to construction or 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 clothing or or cosmetics. Um, uh, THC is 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 has been uh, demonized uh, when it's when in fact is the main ingredient where why we use cannabis. Uh, from the industrial aspects, um, at least in Australia, uh, the government has been very clear from the beginning that we can do, we can develop all kind of technology as long as we don't talk about the THC, which is okay. It is what it is. Every country has its own rules, but in this particular case, we um, uh, the law is very, very blurry in many aspects. We don't know. The government can tell you, yeah, you can grow for for medicine, but you cannot use the leaf or you cannot use the biomass. Or it's very complicated to answer this question because every country has its, their own law. In the United yeah. States, it's completely different. 
in the United States. Um, it's a free market. It's um, some common controllable. So it's um, so uh, the the um, I would say that the challenge is to standardize the construction uh, method. In, in a way that we can we know what we are going to be doing uh, um, or, or how we're going to mix or how we're going to achieve certain strength of the of the of the construction material so yes um it's complicated <laughs> i well, wish i can have but, a, but it's complicated one. but your response is extremely helpful so thank you for that yes uh we're proposing to build is smart him homes um, smart home homes are basically high-tech home living uh, with all the benefits that um, the hemcrete uh, has. I can only talk as a civil engineer. When I met uh, hemcrete, I was completely amazed and impressed by the properties of the of the material itself when it's mixed with lime. Um, I just couldn't believe that we were never taught this in the universities. I feel very shy because of that, but we need to understand that we are the kids of the prohibition. So um, we have been basically misled of a knowledge that should have been universal. Um, it should, we should be using him for everything. So, yes. So um, this is one of our first um, uh, designs. It was, uh, 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 our architect Car Carol Gasparini. She she's um she's um she lives in Sydney. She have um, designed this home uh, for a specific construction method that is uh, is is called Ercrit. Um, this is spray is hemp already spray on the walls. Um, uh, the difference between this particular method is that we can build curve. I mean that we can do domes, we can do round homes, um, and this is something that we are, um, where it is a very promising construction methodology. This plus using the hemp batteries, which are intended to be in, embedded in, uh, integrated with the house, plus the solar power, power capabilities, um, I am absolutely certain that we can have self-sustainable home of grids that will not depend on anyone except having water. Um, this is this is a dream that we are certain working very hard to make it happen. This is another uh, 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 design. This is a tiny home, transportable, full of um, hempcrete. Uh, we have all other alliances with other companies uh, that we are discussing. Uh, to use their technology for door frames and, and window frames made out of plastic hemp, which is um, uh, the second dream that we are uh, uh, working on. It's something that I'm going to talk to you uh, shortly after. And this is another design that is especially for for handicapped people that, um, with special needs. Um, um, we tr we truly believe that tiny homes is the future and is um, for a lot of reasons that are not within the scope of our discussion today or of our presentation. But um, I am completely convinced that, um, that uh, this is what the people need. Uh, transportable homes, um, especially homeless, especially people that uh, require net, net less space to live. You can see they can, they are, um, they can be tall. Um, we use solar panels. Um, um, uh, these particular homes are not uh, hempcrete, hempcrete, completely hempcrete, because the walls are very thin, but it's a mix between, hem between hempcrete and plastic hemp. Or, or or hemp boards, as we can say. So as we speak, we we uh, we are running uh, from Perth uh, three projects. Uh, the first one is in Sydney. Uh, one of our clients is doing a extension of his home. The extension is basically 150 square meters, which is about a thousand something, uh, 1500 uh, square foot. 
Uh, then we also have another client in, in Malaysia. Uh, we are in the, the project in Sydney is already um, has been lodged in the for for permits. The the project in Kuala Lumpur and in Bogota, Colombia, they are both now in the in the in the design stage. This is our project in Sydney. We you know, I do the role of the project manager, which I, we do this all, everything online. We are connecting different engineers around the world. Uh, we work in a collaboration mode. This is the home that we are intending to do in, oh, we should be building this um, by October in, in, in Malaysia. This is a very fascinating, a project because as you mentioned or asked me earlier we are truly considering using bamboo for the structure um, uh, bamboo and hemp they mix and they dance very smoothly like timber timber and, and, and concrete they dance um, they, they are very well aligned and and it's the best construction method that you can have using using hemp The one in Colombia is uh, the, the design in Colombia is perhaps the most dearest for many reasons. I'm, more, I'm Latino, like I said earlier, and I'm truly convinced our, our team in Colombia is not just they are not just convinced that we can do this, but uh, uh, I know that we can make a change um, and, and build better quality home for our people down in South America. So, uh, so what is exactly hem hempcrete? The hempcrete is uh, very simple. It's a mix between the herd, which is the internal part of the of the stock, lime and water, and it, the, this mix will you know will adapt to the mold that we are going to be using mold or foam work there are many ways to to build uh, to do concrete, uh, hempcrete uh, products one of them is blocks as you can see this is uh, the company of mr david chill is is right now building his home with these blocks uh, one of the particular um, uh, or most interesting part as he, uh, of this Henry blocks is that um, uh, it is actually one third of the norm, one third of the weight of the normal block, with a um, with a hundred times better uh, benefits and um, characteristics from the construction perspective. So, so this is a, like a miracle construction uh, material. This is another uh, coli. Um, is um, uh, building those um, hemp tree blocks here here in Australia, and I just also read that he is also basically starting operations in the United States to export this technology, which is something that is very fantastic. So um, hemp tree is is uh, like I said, it's a strong, lightweight, it's breathable, which is one of the most interesting uh, part uh, or benefits. Um, it's energy efficient, it's, uh, it's great insulation. Um, but in in the case of the Australian market, it is uh, fire resistant, um, pest resistant, which is a big problem that we have in this country. Uh, like I said earlier, it's very simple. Doesn't matter where you go, it is, uh, you just need to mix the herd the water and the lime, and you can use it for the floor, you can use it for the for the roof, for the walls, um, uh, you name it. So this is uh, what I call the hippie way to build homes. It is um, a ram, ram earth type. Uh, we use a foam work, and then you pour the hempcrete within the, within the foam work. You tap it a little bit, you strip it, and you keep on going. Um, it's labor intensive. It is something that uh, is still being used, but uh, we are developing new technologies every day to increase the performance construction way to do. It's a traditional way. So um, I call it the hippie way. And the, um, this is the method that uh, we are um, encouraging people to use. It's uh, fast, it's clean, it's, um, it's um, Quite versatile. Uh, it's not easy to use. You need uh, special equipment, 
But once you learn how to adapt this technology to your needs, um, you can build any shape, anything, um, which is fantastic. The, um, finally, um, is the paneling, panel, panel construction. Uh, this is um, it's a, it's a method that I also like, um, but you, you've got to have a special architecture that meet, that can merge the construction method and the sizes of the, of the panels to, so that you can build in an industrialized way. So it's got every, every method has uh, benefits. Um, it also has some inconvenience. Uh, but it all depends on the client needs, the time frame of execution, but more important is the space where the construction will be, where, where will be built. I'm saying this because uh, hemp itself requires a large space to store the, uh, the, the herd and the line. Um, when you use this type of um, methodology, you just move the production to a warehouse somewhere and you just transport it and install it. It's got good things, it's got bad things, but when you're talking industrialized way, then uh, houses, they're all, they become more similar. So it's, it's uh, yes or no. Um, uh, uh, my apologies, I missed this one. Uh, this is, um, an old dream of um, automat automatizing a factory to build um, homes uh, in a robot uh, using robotics. Um, um, uh, this is just a concept design that that is in the mind. But um, I am convinced that we can, if we were to, for instance, to solve homeless homelessness or to build large uh, let's say uh, mining mining camps. Uh, you generally have 400, 500 um, little houses. This could be perfect uh, for to solve these um, kind, kind of problems. And of course, there is a 3D printer uh, idea, which is also um, uh, in the air. Some there are some companies, especially I met a, 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 some years ago, uh, MIT engineer who has already designed the mix to use to use it for hand printing printers. I'm saying this because the, is, um, the every mix is different. When you, it's like concrete, you know, so when you, for this particular um, uh, construction method, and uh, the mix was designed so that you never lose the breathability that the hand uh, provides once it's, it becomes hard. Um, uh, you need this this type of printer requires a uh, almost liquid uh, a mix, um, but with the technology that this engineer produces, it, 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 it rebuilds itself once it has been poured. So yes, there is a lot of science uh, behind this in business. Um, um, and, and a lot of science, science yet to come. Um, I must apologize for my English in this mo moment. It's um, <laughs> very early to speak any language. <laughs> well, it's a lot better than uh, our Spanish, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, and my Russian is horrible, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the idea or the dream is to build homes completely out of hemp. Uh, the furniture, the structure, the kitchen. Um, I can say responsible, in, responsibly in front of the audience that um, we have all this technology at hand. Uh, there are companies that uh, they do hand wood. Hand wood can be used for the structure. Uh, uh, plastic can be used for the structure, plastic hem. The walls, hempcrete, and so you name it. Um, there is a company in the U.S. that they were asking uh, rising capital for um, uh, to to produce a transparent uh, mix uh, to use it as windows. So in, in no time, uh, we will have we will be able to build every element of houses from hemp. When you compare hempcrete with um, concrete, uh, the first thing that you you, you see is uh, that the density. 
is uh, quite quite low, while the strength is is uh, incredibly superior. And, uh, this is quant was one of the first thing that blew my mind as an engineer, and that's why it's one of the main reasons I am in this business to promote this kind of construction material because it's not just a construction material, it's to provide health. Uh, you can also see the, uh, the comparison between hempcrete and clay bricks. Clay bricks are traditionally used in, in Australia. You can see the, the huge difference between both. And, uh, um, and once again, uh, every characteristics is uh, compared, compared with the clay brick is much more superior. So um, uh, yes, um, I guess in the near future, when we standardize this industry, uh, we will remember this uh, with some joy that there were people that kept fighting for humans to get up, to get better homes. Uh, concrete decays with time, concrete absorbs too much humidity, um, um, makes the houses sick and therefore it makes people sick inside. It's large buildings, small buildings, they're all the same. After 20 years, many homes are, are uh, the, the mold start growing from inside and once it's out, it, uh, once it, you see it in the walls, uh, you better move because that's not gonna change. It will, it will get people sick. So from so from talking to one house, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the main idea is to build eco-villages or complete cities if it's possible using this technology. Um, there are many applications on the way that you can you know, use eco-villages for when, you, when it comes to support people with, um, with special needs, and special circumstances like family violence people you can have these kind of eco villages where where you can provide better living for the people who have suffered more than others those are the signs that we have done those are part of our work many type of applications any anywhere on earth and for any purposes they can be stuck and you can stack the nav you can i mean this Endless. You can, as you can saw the first, you saw the first design, and this is a more scalable, scalable one. Mm -hmm. So in 2017, uh, basically, uh, we we got this information from the from the uh, CEO of the Urban Development Institute of Western Australia. This this number blew my mind. Uh, Perth is one of the richest city on earth. I just, as an engineer, just couldn't understand why we have so many homeless and why we're spending so much money just to keep them alive while we can do, uh, we can apply economies, uh, economic model to, to provide what they need and still save money. So I put this, um, I, I profile this in a small project. So I, I put in the numbers together. Um, I came to understand that in a seven years plan, we basically would need over 7,000 hectares to not to have homeless in Perth. Um, while providing over 48,000 direct jobs, absorb uh, over 60,000 tons of CO2. And, and, and I, bet, I guess I have um, also uh, uh, not mentioned that the, one of the main characteristics of hemp itself and using hempcrete is that it absorbs the CO2. So the process of, um, the process of hardening the hempcrete is called carbonization. So this, um, uh, it uses CO2 to become strong, basically that's the way it is. So when you put all these elements together, the government could save in four years time while building the, the, these accommodations or eco-villages, they could save over $4 billion in that time span. Before we go on to the next though, what is it, the 20,000 homes, what 
would that cost to build 20,000 homes per per home? Um, is it a uh, Australian price, each one will be in the order of $70,000. So if you took 70,000 and you multiplied it by 20,000, the cost would be what, 1.7 yes. billion? And so the yes. return on investment would be <laughs> a no brainer, huh? Yes, it's very simple because um, it, it costs, it costs right now, it costs the government to keep the homeless uh, Australia is not like United States. Australia is a very, it's very, it's an open market, but at the same time, it's a very socialist. It, it, it support the people. So, um, so every home, home, homeless, costs the government fifty thousand dollars per year. So when rather than using, you know, just they don't give the money, just support to the to the to these people. So rather than using this money into there, why don't we just take this money and let's do something more beneficial for everyone. At the end, they will have their, where they live. Um, everybody save money and you create jobs and you create a number of benefits. Of course, I want, generally, I want to highlight to, in this kind of presentations, that uh, it, although it might seem a little bit awkward and crazy of everything, Thing that we're talking, uh, we are responsible engineers. We do the proper analysis, risk analysis, so everybody understand that there are good things about things. Yes, and there are strengths, there are weaknesses, there are opportunities, there are threats, and, and uh, every country is different, every market is different. So um, this is specifically applied for the Australian market uh, in Western Australia, where I where I'm from. Uh, the THC level can legally go up to 1%, which is fine. Uh, it it gives a breath to the farmers because in this part of the world, our, the, our soil is a little bit acid. And when you grow hemp uh, and the hemp touches as, uh, uh, acid soil, it becomes marijuana. Uh, uh, marijuana, the, the plant loves the acid, uh, acid in, in in, in the soil, so it, so the THC becomes stronger. It's a biology thing of the plant. So um, uh, with good strains, um, there has been successful crops in Western Australia. So yes, uh, our philosophy is from soil to soil. The idea is to have a self-sustainable approach, uh, create um, uh, to do uh, to create products that are sustainable and that are more important, biodegradable and carbon negative. Without the science and technologies, this couldn't be able to do. The compliance to the current engineering standards is a must, although we need to create the new ones because this is a new industry. A new industry that has to have a, a, a responsible social impact in, in, in humanity. That's my thinking. We do have a number of um, potential investments for interested parties. Uh, we, you know, we believe that um, the hemp milk is a solution for nutrition in the third world countries. Uh, we, um, among other investments that you can potentially see here. So um, uh, generally, I'm asked, uh, how do we join, Ramon? How we how do we get in contact with you? So um, here are my contact numbers, but um, uh, I all I always uh, end up this um, uh, the presentation uh, telling the audience that if you feel that your soul resonate with these answers, you can join as an advocate. You can become an activist. You can work. Uh, act, or you can hire our service or invest in our projects. It's your choice, and there are many companies that are basically doing the same. Our difference is uh, we uh, have a, a strong uh, engineering background. Biomass engineering also is working in parallel. This is a very early stage. Um, uh, we are intending to build a, a hemp electric uh, vehicle. Um, uh, uh, this is a completely new business for me. Um, I from the oil and gas industry, I got uh, 
this has been a learning project for me because uh, within the uh, SBN that I mentioned in the beginning, um, uh, uh, the team has been encouraged to to build an electric car. So they asked me how to you know to formulate the project somehow. So I've been working uh, di di diligently in the time frame that I have available to put this project together. But we have been very lucky at the same time because once we put the idea, there was another person that said, but wait a minute, I have a, I have a mold in my house that we can use to build a car, really? Yes, so this car that might seem ugly and all full of trash around, that's our baby. <laughs> it's ready to rock and roll. Uh, we are lucky in this, in this uh, discovery, uh, we we found an engineer uh, from France as well. He is, uh, he's got a master degree in, in plastic hemp and he's part of our team. So uh, we are in the process of completing the formulation of the project to start rising capital for the first, for the first prototype. But in parallel, then another person in, in which showed this presentation in the electric vehicle uh, Western Australian Association, and then another engineer, but wait a minute, we can provide the engine. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we basically have all the elements ready to go uh, to deliver this car. But, um, you know, you're, we keep learning uh, in a very fast mode. So our another team in Colombia, they build this car from not using batteries, but using electric um, uh, super condensators by absorbing the energy from solar panels. Uh, of course, this model is something crazy that this person did. Uh, this is an engineer as well. Uh, he was inspired by the by a cartoon in the 60s. <laughs> uh, you know, so it's coming. We have a good team, just like in the hemp industry, we all just need the money to make things happen. But in this journey of discovering, is this, a, this journey of Columbia's, is this Columbia's counterpart of Elon Musk driving this? Yeah. <laughs> can say yes. <laughs> okay. But in this journey, Mr. Jim, uh, uh, next slide, uh, it changed, it blew up our minds. Um, we are now, uh, personally speaking, I am now um, taking all this knowledge and all those components. I'm, in, I'm, I'm inspired by this last um, design by an uh, American company. This car is is made complete of the main parts are built from plastic hemp. This car is one of the best technologies I've ever seen so far. So in this moment, we are um, starting to talk to the universities in, in, in here in Australia. There are some companies, some universities that do have already uh, designs that they use for a car race. Uh, it's, a, it's a solar car race that is done every two years from Darwin to Adelaide. So uh, it is about selecting one of those um, designs and start adapting that design to, to, to what we want to build. So this is, this is, this is what we, it's so, like I said, it's a very early stage. We have numbers. Um, uh, already in place, but um, uh, uh, with the new, this new engineer, uh, Benjamin, um, he will be basically helping us to lead this project. I'm just a small guy in the, or, in the whole organization. I just get things, you know, put together everything and make sure that everything is delivered. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you so much. Really do appreciate it. I mean, it's really been an eye-opening uh, hour with you. It's uh, made a lot of uh, thoughts uh, race at least through my head. I know 
others as well. I'm sure that people are going to be eager to get in touch with you over this. So uh, thank you so much, Ramon. Really do appreciate it. And for the audience, thank you for uh, joining us today. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Uh, we're going to sign off. And thank you again. Really do appreciate it, Ramon. Thank you. Thank you very much, my man. Thank you for the invitation. It has been a pleasure sharing this time with you.